BSB's Global Accessibility Awareness Day 2021 recap. Today is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. And what does that actually mean? It is about raising awareness of digital inclusion and the usage of technology for people that are disabled, i.e. being able to make websites accessible for people with a visual impairment, being able to make light changes for people with dyslexia, making digital services accessible for people with hearing loss, virtual sign language and interpretation. But over the next few videos I'm going to make today slash tonight, we are going to focus on how a blind person can use this type of technology that is here in front of me. I also love smart home gadgets and I generally hoard tech. Blind people can also gain Alexa. What makes one of these devices useful to someone with sight loss? Not only can she tell me the weather, she can order tea bags. It can also provide entertainment. Find diaries from Amazon Music. One of the things I love her for most is my home connectivity. Turn on office. So turn on hall. What I'm saying is she's really used. Don't take lights for granted. For people with sight loss and a visual impairment, controlling the lighting of your home is actually really crucial. Even people who are blind and totally have no vision may still have light perception. Or it's good to have the ability to control your own lighting, whether it be by motion sensors or also by audio. This motion sensor in the hall, when triggered of an evening, will turn the light to this setting quite dull, but it's enough for myself and my partner. And that's just one of the reasons why we love. How can a blind person use a TV? Aha! The Alexa, lady. Turn on the TV. Starting with actually turning the TV on. Here, I'm using a smart speaker to summon a routine to turn on the TV. Some TVs and smart gadgets will actually allow you to control the TV from your Alexa or smart speaker. Actually interacting with a TV, I am using an Apple TV box with a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. A screen reader is useful to someone with sight loss as it reads elements on the screen, if it is provided and it is compatible. Part 1. Gaming with a visual impairment using narrator. Holding down the home button on your Xbox controller and if you can see here there is narrator or magnifier. So I'm going to show you how narrator works. So press the pause menu button. We do. So this will read menus. So let's see what's in Game Pass at the moment. Oh, look at that. It's a really interesting piece to open up to. Part 2 Gaming with a visual impairment using magnifier. And we're going to turn magnifier on. And things have just been made slightly bigger, but you can also control the level of the zoom and you can see how this works in gameplay. So you can see, and I'm just literally just moving around using the analog, the right analog stick. So there are a few ways you can interact with a games console if you're visually impaired, one of them being narrator, one of them being magnifier. As good as these are, games still aren't 100% accessible and ready to utilize this technology, but that is down to the developers and no one else. The tools are there and have been given by the likes of Microsoft and even Sony for developers to create accessible games. Part 3. Gaming with a visual impairment. Screen sniffing. <laughs> Alright, not literally. But in all seriousness, sometimes you have to get creative. Gaming is one of my favourite pastimes, whether that be kicking a ball around a field, or taking a car for a spin in Grand Theft Auto, if you know what I mean. But for me, in my personal circumstances, being able to get closer to the screen has enabled me to still have some level of gameplay and fun. Other things you could consider is playing co-op 
or playing with a friend virtually, so they're able to guide you, as it were. Honestly though, find what works for you. Everyone is different and unique, and so are the things that help them.